principal of the school, and I am so glad you uh, are here to join us for our, our, our elementary uh, presentation today. As parents, I know we all want our children to experience school success. I know it, I'm a parent myself. And success for students is different. What one student perceives success may be, may be different from another. And at Cambridge International Academy, you will learn today how we integrate our school philosophy along with integrating our academics to help students experience school success, to help students reach their maximum academic potential, and I think most important is to enjoy their learning, to be excited coming to school, wanting to come to school, and wanting and desiring to learn. Pillar School Philosophy, Yasmin, uh, Head of Academics, will be talking about how we integrate and customize the academic program for our students. We do have a parent testimonial who will come up and share her experience and about her son and how he is developing uh, since enrolling at Cambridge. Lynn, the school director, will give us closing remarks. It will be my pleasure to give you a tour of the facility and at the end there will be a Q&A and we're going to separate the grades from 1 to 6 will be with Yasmin and grade 7 to 8 will be with me. So our school philosophy consists of four pillars as mentioned earlier. The first pillar has to do with academic success and academic success for every student for every grade level. So how do we go about doing this? You and I know education is not a cookie cutter. A one size fits all approach fails students on all levels. We know this. And so at Cambridge, what we do is we customize and we personalize the educational pathway of our students so that they can reach their academic potential so that they can experience school success. Along with an individualized student planning is a customized program. So we set them up for success with an individualized student planning. We customize the program so they can reach their academic success. And the customized programs we have are a blended learning, a reach ahead, regular, one-to-one -one, and also a flexible schedule. So this is a sample of a personalized student planning. So as you can see, there is a blended learning approach. I've been hearing a lot from parents that in the last two years, their child has lost, there's been a learning loss in the last two years. And that it is because of remote learning due to COVID-19. And so they find themselves, last year was a one-year gap, this year is a two-year gap. And so everyone is getting a little bit anxious. Your parents, you want the best for your children. And so we offer a blended learning. A blended learning is usually for core subjects such as math and English. The student gets a one-to-one -one teacher to student learning environment to help them close that achievement gap. Throughout the rest of the day, in science, in French, social, social, social studies, art, gym, they integrate with their peers. So they don't feel isolated from their peers and they are still part of the school community. We also offer for our grade eight students who are beyond, let's say, their grade level. And you know, sometimes when you, you're beyond your grade level, you get bored in class. So we don't want to hold back any students. We don't want students to be bored in class. So we offer the Reach Ahead credits. This allows students in grade eight to take grade nine high school credits. It could be anywhere from one up to four courses. So why are we doing this? It allows students to smoothly transition 
from elementary to high school. It allows them to experience the rigorous workload that is needed in high school. And it also decreases their sense of anxiety or stress that they may feel because jumping from eighth grade to ninth grade, we know is a huge transition. So this way they all have some experience with the high school courses, they feel confident, and then when they step into ninth grade, they already received grade nine credits. They come into grade nine being very well prepared of what's ahead of them and feeling confident about their studies. I'm gonna go back one more time before I go on to the next slide, the blended learning. And I don't want you to misinterpret that blended learning is only for students who have an achievement gap that they want to close. No, 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 no. This is also for students who are high performers. You get students in third grade functioning at a five grade math. And I hear parents tell me, my son is bored. He knows everything. He's ahead in class. He's the teacher assistant. Why hold the student back? Put them in a customized program. Put them one-to-one -one and learn grade five math. Don't hold students back. When we start holding students back, boredom sets in. They're not so engaged at school. They don't wanna go. And what happens to their performance when students are not engaged? It's not an upward climb, it's a downward climb. So that's why when students are in elementary, they come in with all this excitement. They're curious to learn. We gotta feed that curiosity. We gotta nurture that curiosity. We can't say, oh, you're great for your grade level. Just stay there, be my teacher assistant, or help others and move on. Boredom sets in. All right, next one is designing interesting courses. We all know that it is a, uh, an instrumental part of school success is getting students excited about coming to school, excited about learning. And how do we do this? There was a group of, uh, of experts, including uh, Yasmin, uh, during the summertime, uh, one of our coding teachers, uh, Edwin Lee, myself, and the director of the school, Lynn, we came together and we designed a cross-curriculum coding program. So coding, is not only found in math, it is found or embedded in all subject areas. So in language, in social studies, in science, in geography, in history. And Yasmin will be going into further detail and actually showing you examples of students' projects using coding. We also uh, offer or uh, present our students with renowned educational resources. Yasmin will go be going into great detail about that. We implement Singapore math. But just as academics is important, so is the non-academics course. Because these courses enliven the curriculum. They're sometimes these are the reasons why students want to come to school. It's because they have this fun and exciting non-academic course. So this is a sample of our, um, one of our students' schedule. As you detect, uh, the core subjects are mostly found at the beginning of the day. Our day starts at nine o'clock, but we do have morning clubs that we offer to our students. This year we offer two, we offered music, so students are learning how to play the violin, and we also have a math club. So students may come to school as early as eight o'clock and participate in a club. And this way they're all attuned and ready and brightened to start their day. They have the maths in the morning, sometimes it's language, uh, it depends on what grade level you have. We have French three times a week, we have gym twice a week. Gym is comprised of four different units. The soccer, the basketball, the martial arts, and cross country, or cross training, I should say. So the martial arts, uh, students go to a dojo, not too far from here. We have a black belt, uh, a martial arts teacher uh, who's been with us and he is phenomenal. And he will, uh, give students a martial arts lesson twice a week, and after three months, 
if they qualify, they may end up getting a yellow belt. In the afternoon, as you can see, it's more with the social sciences, more of the interesting courses. We do offer character education uh, once a week, but that is not to say that students are only learning character education once a week for 45 minutes. Character education is impeded in all subject areas. Our teachers are very vigilant when there is a teaching opportunity, a learning opportunity in the class to stop the lesson, stop it, and talk about the situation, they will do so, all right? Um, and in the afternoon, so from uh, 3 to 3.30, or sometimes from 2.30 to 3.30, as I mentioned, there's music once a week. They're learning how to play the piano. We have coding on Mondays and Fridays. We have Master Chef. Everyone is excited about Master Chef. It not only teaches students about nutrition and about food planning, but it also gives them uh, uh, an, uh, an ability to develop a lifelong skill, right? Cooking is important in all stages of our lives. And it's a great way to socialize, great way to learn about each other's cultural dishes. So it is a big hit here at Cambridge. We also offer art. So art is being offered from January to March. And then we will replace art with drama in which students will be presenting a year-end presentation. So we have two presentations a year. One is around the, uh, December where we have our students taking music, do a music recital. And we congregate, everyone participates in. And it's a time to celebrate and respect our diversities. Um, and then at, from 3.30 to 4.30, there are uh, c different types of clubs. It's not limited to these clubs, but one particular club I really enjoy, or the students really enjoy, is called the Eureka Club. It's a STEM program in which students either work independently or they may work with a buddy, with a, buddy, with a, a group of students, and they build uh, objects. And it is so popular that some of the students want to take these objects home that they built and, of course, gift it to their family and to their friends. Along under the academic success pillar is also our teachers. Our teachers lead our students. They act as mentors. Students are not left to their own devices during the day in the class. Our teachers are always leading them, always recognizing when to challenge students, when to support students. They establish a very good relationship, a strong working relationship, so students feel comfortable being in the classes. It is a risk-free environment. They could ask questions. Uh, teachers also teach a growth mindset, and it is very important to always be proactive, always be vigilant. Our second pillar, so we know part of student school success, is really our close relationship with our parents, and I'm very proud of that. Very, very proud the way Cambridge International Academy, not only the administrative team, but also the teachers are always, always, in communication with our parents. And we do this in a number of ways. One is a Remind app. So a Remind app is very accessible on your phone. Uh, we are able to make announcements on the administrative level, but it is also a way for the teachers to personally connect to the parents and let them know how the day was going or what the students have learned or remind them that students have an upcoming project. We also have monthly parent council meetings. We have a chair and a co-chair, and these parents encourage other parents to bring their voice forward. We are always, always open for parents to provide feedback on school initiatives or school activities. And um, we also hold monthly newsletters. So monthly newsletters are published every month at the beginning of the month. And they are there to showcase the achievements 
of, of our students. They are there to make, of course, announcements. And it's not just put together by administrators or teachers. We have students also involved in the newspaper. We welcome the high school team and students in grades seven and eight. We certainly welcome them so they could be part of the planning process. They could be part of writing short articles or writing their uh, reflections, being part of the photography club, taking pictures throughout the month because they know those pictures will be published in our newsletter. And last but not least, we have formal parent meetings throughout the school year. It is very important for parents to always keep track of their child's progress. And we do this in a number of ways. When students start at Cambridge International Academy, they, all parents receive daily reports. We have all been in a situation where you turn to your child and you say, what did you learn today? What did you do at school today? And the answer is always paramount. Nothing. I didn't learn anything. Didn't do much. So you feel like you're always left in the dark in your child's education. You don't feel that you are part of it because your child being the middle communicator won't part that knowledge to you. And sometimes teachers don't either. Not here at Cambridge. You are being given a daily report. It's a link that you will have on your phone and teachers will personally write what they taught, how the child is doing during that lesson, what are the strengths, what are the challenges, and what are the next steps. This way, it's like a magic bullet. As soon as students realize that the parents and the teachers and the administrators are working alongside, we are a team raising a student up, what happens to them? I'll tell you what happens to them. They start taking accountability and responsibility for their learning. Why? Because they feel supported. They feel people care about them. And when you have your parents and you have teachers and you have administrators caring for you, caring about your future, caring for you as an individual, they start stepping up to the plate. All right, so that is so important. Once the weekly reports are intact, most of the time, it could be anywhere from six to eight weeks, and everything is going well. There are no hiccups. There are no situations. We start backpedaling. And maybe we don't do daily, we do weekly. From weekly, we do bi-monthly. From bi-monthly, we do monthly. The end goal is for you not to receive those reports and still have the child reach his or her academic potential. Why? Because now they are independent learners. Along with our meetings, we do have Markbook. So Markbook is a platform where students uh, record the grades of, uh, of each student. And it's kind of a pictograph, it's kind of a graph that kind of, pro that kind of uh, calculates how the students have progressed over time. Okay, so we share that with the parents. We also have a program called Mylexia for language-based learners. It's absolutely phenomenal. I stand behind it. I love this program. And it also gauges students every day on how they are in doing. So this is the progression that we always want to see. It is always on an incline. Sometimes that's not realistic. Sometimes the student will plateau before they go up to the next level. Our third pillar is beyond the curriculum. So as I mentioned to you before, academics is important, but just as important is the non-academic courses because they complement. It's all about student life. So we offer, or we make suggestions. Our student, our teachers are vigilant to pick out the talents, hidden talents of students, and sometimes encourage that the talent is there and make them want to delve a little bit further, learn a little bit further. So for example, if we have some students who are excellent in math, they love math, we will suggest and help them enroll in math competitions. There is also a coding club competition. So those students that are passionate about coding, we help them to uh, enroll in coding, comp in coding competitions. 
Um, so this is more or less for a student between grades one and eight. And as you enter seven and eight, you could tell competitions are more, Toastmasters, writing competitions. And we like our students in grades seven and eight to start taking on a leadership role. That means they could be part of the high school council. They can be junior members, right? And plan and organize events. So then when they are in high school, they have some experience and they don't fear being in a leadership role. The younger we start children in a leadership role, as they grow older, the more confident they are to do that. Uh, so these are just uh, some uh, photos that we have and some of the uh, testimonies that we recently got from our parents. We just had our half year uh, parent teacher meetings and some of the feedback we received is I can't believe my child in such a short period of time learned so much. Well, let's face it, when you're in an overpopulated classroom, how can you progress? It's very difficult to progress, isn't it, right? You don't get the attention you need from the teacher. And it's no one's fault. It's just simply not attainable. It's just simply not realistic. So of course, in a smaller class setting, students tend to propel a lot quicker. My child enjoys, this is the one I love the best, where you have parents saying, it was like pulling teeth bringing my child to school. <laughs> and now, I, it, you know, Saturday is a bad day because it's not school. I mean, how wonderful is that to hear? And of course, everyone loves the Eureka Club. Uh, as I mentioned, those are the different types of competitions that we offer. Also, experiential learning is very important. So learning shouldn't just take place in the classroom. It has to go beyond the classroom. And what we do is we have activities or uh, school trips every month where students get out outside of the classroom and learn. So we also do, um, we went to the salmon migration back in the fall time and the students learned about salmon and identifying the different salmon in the Lake Ridge in Lake Ontario. We went to treetop. Some students had fear of heights, so they, had a, they were a little fearful, uh, but once with encouragement and were able to participate it, of course, absolutely loved it. We have hiking. Uh, we also have a community service where we go and we do a shoreline cleanup. And as I mentioned, character education is so important. We like to get guests from the outside, so students in standing uh, positions in the community come uh, to uh, a Cambridge International Academy and speak to the elementary team. So for trust, we had uh, the Durham police, uh, two, uh, two police officers come to the school and to talk about the students, how trust is important and how does that relate to their job. We are getting also the police coming for March to talk about responsibility. Uh, in April will be the fire department talking about fairness. We will be doing a project with uh, an old folks home in May to uh, emulate caring. And then in June, we are inviting one of the MPPs here in the Durham region to come to talk to our students. Uh, in addition to the character education program, we also have high school students who do volunteer work and also help out with facilitating. It's twice a month, I believe, in the afternoon, uh, during lunchtime. And last pillar, but I think, you know, certainly not the least, I think it's the most important, is I'm so proud of the, of the hard work of our teachers who go above and beyond to always make sure that students are on track with their learning. To them, coming to Cambridge is not a job. Coming to Cambridge is a vocation. They care and love each and every one of your children. And that's the most important. When students feel loved, when young children feel respected, when young children know that their voices are heard and that they are valued when they come to school, the floodgates open in learning, right? Because they feel trusted. So I really thank the great faculty that I have at Cambridge to help students succeed at school. Now, Yasmin would be so kind to come up. Um, just going to quickly go over the academics at Cambridge and the elementary division, focusing on math and English. Now, math and English, math and language arts are foundational.
for all other learning categories, so we're just going to focus on that to start off with. <coughs> me. So just want you to know we follow the Ontario curriculum at Cambridge, we follow the Ontario curriculum, but we go beyond. So again, like I said, math and English are foundational. Improved numeracy and literacy helps students go anywhere and everywhere they need to go. In order to do this, we use digital resources, text resources. We vary our instructional delivery to make sure that we're reaching all students. And our assessments are varied to make sure that we're capturing all learner profiles. Mm -hmm. So as Sandra mentioned, we are designing, or we have designed a curriculum where students who are at the grade level, we capture them. Students who are a bit above, we design our curriculum to challenge them. And students who need a little extra support, we also are able to give that support all within the same classroom. And one of the reasons and one of the ways we're able to do this is because we have such small class sizes. So a teacher is really able to deliver to every kind of learner in the classroom. Okay, looking at mathematics, our approach, the approach we take is the Singapore math approach. So this is uh, learning from concrete to abstract. So using hands-on manipulatives. During the pandemic, this was difficult, so, but we were fortunate to, to be able to find a lot of virtual manipulatives. But it, the, the idea is you have to, children have to understand, have to feel and touch and understand in a practical, real way what they're learning in math before they're learning it in an abstract way. So we have, um, like I said, we use Singapore math. Uh, we use a Nelson resource that's actually, they, they've used the Singapore math approach and designed a digital resource that's phenomenal. And, and later on, um, we'll show you guys a, a, a demonstration of that after the tour. We also use iXL. iXL is a great resource. Some of you may be familiar with it. Uh, a really skill and drill, because at the end of the day, sometimes children just need to learn a skill and repeat it, and repeat it quite a bit, especially in math, in order to get that, that solid understanding, okay? We use Prodigy again, some of you may be familiar with that, it's more game-based, so that really keeps students engaged in the learning, and scratch coding. So coding is part of the curriculum now, but we're, we're very, proud and pleased, as, as Sandra mentioned, that we've gone beyond what's required for the ministry. So again, coding is really important because it, it, it teaches students practical and transferable skills. They're really important because we're living in a world where you know, children growing up today are all going to be digital citizens. Uh, we start very young. Okay, it's part of the ministry requirement, but we go above and beyond. And we start with the basics. So it's not just, this is how you do coding, but it's, you know, what is coding? So we have a quick little video here of actually one of our coding teachers who was teaching a quick little lesson, basically trying to teach, uh, I believe the student here is four or five years old, you know, what is coding? What are coding blocks? So let me just show that really quick. Side. All right, so we have the can on the stage on the right side, and you have the blocks on your left side. Can you tell me what's in the middle? What's in the middle? There's like yellow box, green box, or orange, and blue box. Mm -hmm. So the this all of these boxes in the middle, this is what we call code. Can you see it me? Code. Code. Alright, very good. So So again it's important to understand what it is um, beyond uh, how to do it, but what it is you're doing. Again, it's part of the 2020 Ontario curriculum changes to include coding in the math curriculum. What I want to point out to you here is what we have done is above and beyond. So uh, coding is part of the uh, algebra strand in the elementary division. Um, everything you see here, you'll get a, a copy of all of this in, in your packet. 
everything you see here in blue is what the ministry requires. Okay, so everything you see here in blue is the coding required by the ministry. All the other projects we have scheduled under all the other strands in every single month is, again, above and beyond. Okay, so coding is an integral part of our math curriculum. Uh, computational thinking, digital literacy, very critically important. We recognize that and we offer that. Um, and it's such an important part of the curriculum, Ms. Sandra Matthew. It's actually, even though it's part of the math program, we actually have a coding class outside of the math class. So math is offered every single day. We have an hour of additional instruction in coding outside of the math program. Okay, so, so students have time to work on all these projects. Um, and I'm going to show you an example of a project uh, that's a cross-curricular coding project. So again, we are having, have our students doing coding outside of the math requirements and outside of math even. So we have looked at, the program we looked at developed, what we said to ourselves, well how can students apply coding outside of math? How can they use it in social studies? How can they use it in science? How can they use it to storyboard stories? in language arts. So we're teaching them the skills they need to do that. So it becomes, again, a transferable skill. They can create presentations that they can use outside of math. So this is an example. This is a, um, a preliminary project where the students were working on, where what they had to do was actually upload images uh, into the Scratch platform, upload sounds into the Scratch platform, now this all sounds like it's really easy, but it's not. <laughs> and, and it took several sessions with our coding teacher to get kids um, to the point where they could do this with some success. And this is, uh, let me just, and, and of course we do it in a way that's engaging. So we didn't start off with, you know, we're gonna teach you how, they co how to code and right away you have to give a presentation on rocks and minerals. You know, tell me about three of your favorite things. So that's how the coding teacher started with this. Uh, let's look over to the code. So three things I love the most are, we have roller coasters. And again, we have sound effects that go with it. <laughs> and then skiing. And games. And the code was on the other slide, but take a look. So, I mean, it's a fun project. It's engaging, it's transferable, and they're learning coding. It's a win-win for the students and for us. So, switching over to the language arts, from grade one to five, we use a program called Wonders. It's a comprehensive program, has vocabulary instruction, grammar, um, writing, and most importantly, reading comprehension. Uh, again, in our small class slides and sizes, we're able to use a resource like this very effectively because the resource actually comes with leveled readers and leveled instruction. So if your child is at grade level, we have a story and exercises that are at grade level. With that same story, there's exercises and instruction above that grade level, okay? So there's enrichment. If your child needs a remediation or a little push, there are exercises, you know, to help push them up to the grade level, all within the same classroom, okay? In grade six to eight, um, a little bit more, we have nonfiction and fiction, contemporary, classics. Most of the teachers here like to use classics, um, and mostly fiction. The, the, the students tend to prefer fiction. Uh, we're really pleased to say that here at Cambridge, in our middle school level, we actually start students with Shakespeare. So we have a source, a resource that we use called No Fair Shakespeare. And again, you'll be able to, after the tour, take a look at uh, an example of this resource. Well, what it is, is on one side, it has the original Shakespeare text. On the other side, like a contemporary translation, if you will. So it really helps ease uh, students into Shakespeare. They understand it. They can read the contemporary side while the teacher reads the classic. And they can develop an understanding because it's written in plain English. Some of the additional resources we use are Wordly Wise Vocabulary, Vocabulary Program, 
with Royal Hill language and grammar. Um, real, um, we have a real focus on, on writing in terms of getting students in the middle school uh, division ready for writing in high school. EduBlogs, which is a great digital representation of students learning. And again, as I mentioned, the No Fair Shakespeare. So just to wrap up here, you know, really want to emphasize, we use a combination of, of resources, text, digital. Uh, we, we use these resources to help customize uh, the learning for students, to help put them on the right path, on their path, to, to follow them on their path and get them to where they need to be. So again, some of the resources we use, Wonders, Wordly Wise, um, Raw Hill, Nelson, or Singapore Math, of course, and digital resources, IXL, Gizmos, MyLexa, and Prodigy. And now this is just sort of a sampling of what we use. Every time there, whenever there are new resources that we test, we try and we test, we like it, we use it. So the transition in our environment to something new, we find something new, a new resource, the transition to adopt it is very quick. Right? There's, there's a very small enough uh, environment that there's, there's no you know, bureaucratic process to adopting a new textbook or a new program. We see it, we like it, we try it, it's ours. Okay? All right, thank you very much, Sandy. Hi. My name is Bridget. Um, I just started, Austin just started here in January. Um, he's in grade five. Why? I chose Cambridge. Um, he was always bullied in school. He's a good student. He's a B, A plus student all the time. But somehow there was always that gap between the report card and his actual work. And I always had a fight with the school. So it just got to the point where I was like, it's just not working out. And it was a school where his other two siblings went. So. It wasn't a new school. I have been there for maybe 15 years as a parent. So it was a hard switch. Last November, uh, I did the open house here and I was like, that's it. He started in January. I was like, I wasn't even gonna wait for the school year to start new because it just wasn't working and I was just always upset. I never knew what's happening in school. He would go to school, he's a good student, but he always brought his art book. And all I could get was, Austin is always drawing in class. And I said, well, is he done the work? Yes, he's bored. What do you expect him to do the rest of the time in the class? He's done, so he would always draw. And I can't tell him, sit and redo the work. I mean, you can only say that so many times. So it was, he wasn't challenged. He does a lot of extracurricular and it was, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to do Taekwondo anymore. I don't want to do soccer anymore. You're, I kept getting these, I don't want to anymore. And it's like, okay, we have to change something. So he started here and as a parent, I can say, I'm very pleased. He actually is in six clubs. He does two morning clubs and four evening clubs. And I think if you left it up to him, he would be here five mornings, five evenings in clubs. He loves it. Um, the Remind app is great. I always know every day what's going on in class. Or Austin left his homework, which he tends to do that a lot. So last week I tried something new. So three out of four days, homework came home, which is good, but I always hear from the teachers what's going on, or did he not do something? Did he do well in something? I will get pictures off in class, a presentation he did, something he did. So I always know what's happening. And he could come home and we'll talk about class. And he's excited to talk about class because He's engaged, he's challenged. He's not just given the work and it's done and you sit the rest of the class to work on your own and be bored. 
you're always, he's always been pushed and I push him a lot. But now I find before homework would come home and you get the feeling you're doing the homework. And I'm like, that, that's, that's, I shouldn't be learning grade three math all over again. I should know it, but I don't want to. Now homework comes home, or if he's doing a presentation, it's more review. I just sit there, he does it, and he can tell me about it. I am not there searching on Google how to do this, how to do that, what does this mean, that I don't have to do all that extra work. It's just a review with him. He knows what he's doing. He's happy here. He loves coming here. And I know at all times what's happening and he keeps me informed. He's challenged. Um, one thing new for him was learning to play the violin. He only did music in grade one in public school, never got to do it again. Um, he started the violin in January. I think they're up to six songs now. This week they started Harry Potter, which is very challenging, but still, he is learning. He is definitely not a prodigy, <laughs> but he puts the effort in every day to learn it. He's excited about learning the violin. Uh, do I really want to hear it? Not really, I'll be honest, but he works really hard at it. And after a while, I can say to him, I can almost hear the song. And he keeps trying every week. If he started a violin, then he goes on to his art. He's in the art club, he does art. It's something he loves. He loves Master Chef because he loves to cook. And he can cook, so he's happy doing that. And his coding, he was working on creating a game. So there are different aspects that he gets to do. He's always challenged and also there is something different to do all the time. He's not stuck. You're not in class stuck doing this one thing and then be bored. I don't see him being bored, which for me, I, I am just, as a parent, I can say I have no complaints because he's happy, he's doing his work, his grades are up. They've always been up, but it's that he gets to be at the top flat line all across. And he has the things that motivate him. You get positive encouragement. He wants to do it. I don't, I mean, sometimes I'll say, do your homework. He'll whip it out and he'll do it. It's not do your homework and you get the feeling an hour later, you are there doing the homework with the child. It's do your homework, he'll do it, it's done. It's do this, he'll do it, it's done. So. For me as a parent, I can say I am very happy. He's happy. He's engaged. It just works. Thank you so much, Thank you. Bridget. Thank you.